Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome back to the Traitor Abyss, the lovely vehicle we managed to capture in the previous video. In today's episode, we are going to be testing out the newest version of this, which I altered in the sandbox. Now, this is not the finished design, however, I think it is acting a lot better than the version we captured, and that's not to say the version we captured is weak by any stretch of the imagination. The creator really did a fantastic job on this vehicle, but a few things I didn't like personally, so I've changed it to be a more Lathrixian type vehicle. So once it's healed, let's spawn it in and take a look-see. Now I will say, that was incredibly loud. So here we are with the Abyss in its current state. So as you can probably tell, I've not done all that much yet when it comes to the looks of the craft. I will be heavily converting it towards a more chaotic look very soon, but right now all I've focused on is altering how the craft actually functions and hopefully making it more suited to our fleet. I think this could easily be the flagship of the Chaos Undivided fleet, especially with its new paint scheme being red, black and brown. It's it's just very neutral, which I really, really love. So I've added some missiles, I have massively improved the detection system. That would be my only real criticism of this craft, honestly, and I hate leveling criticisms at crafts which I didn't personally build, but this was pretty much it when it came to detection, and it had a few flaws since it was lacking a few different types of detection system and also a complete lack of redundancy. So if this thing got damaged, the ship essentially went blind, it simply couldn't hit the target, and that was something which was happening quite a lot. So what else have I done? I've removed the side lasers here and here, currently the rod is still there, the actual barrel itself of the laser is still there, soon to be removed, but other than that, I've not really changed things on the outside. I have, however, removed several of the shields and increased the strength of the lasers and increased the strength of the point defense systems, so now this thing does a ridiculous amount of damage. It was already doing a lot of damage, now it's even more insane. I've changed the torpedoes slightly, but not much, and I've added loads and loads of cruise missiles, which makes me very, very happy happy indeed. I've also increased its turning speed slightly. This does make it a little bit less stable, but, but what I was finding was things could very easily swarm up ahead or swarm to the side, and then, well, we simply couldn't shoot them. Now, as for plans for the future, the main thing I'm going to be doing is removing this section over here and replacing it with something very similar, at least in terms of the style. Instead of these lovely torpedoes and everything else, it's going to be a runway, and thus we are going to be able to create both the subs and the Seekers at the same time. It's essentially going to be a drone mother, which will make me incredibly happy. That way we have our ability to create vehicles on the fly during combat. Now, although I don't want that to be its main purpose, I think it would just be really, really helpful. I've also reset all of the blueprint spawners so that they can indeed once again spawn in those little submarines, which I will also be editing very soon. Other than that, just a lot of changes to its style to make it look a bit more chaosy, even though it kind of already does, and we will have the ship completed. But for now, let's go ahead and test it against its former comrades. Let's test its loyalty to the Lathrixian Legion. Look at how fast this thing is draining resources. That is actually terrifying. Okay, why are you draining so quickly? With these boilers at the bottom, are they actually going at full speed, even when we're not moving? Because that would be really bad. Or at least when the battery is on full. Also, look how big these boilers are. Yeah, this thing drains power so quickly. Yeah, you're currently on one. Okay, we need to do this. I did not notice this in the sandbox mode, and that's why I wanted to test out in the regular mode, because you have unlimited resources in the sandbox mode. Uh, let's just put these over here. So what I'm going to do is make it so that when we're out of combat, or when the battery's full, we essentially turn down the boilers. In fact, also out of combat, so let's have four of these. Okay. So the first one right now is going to be 
boiler and when we have more than let's say 90% energy we will go ahead and turn it down when battery is above 90 set boiler burn rate to I'm tempted to say zero because it doesn't instantly stop working so it's not like we would lose too much out there but let's say 0.1 There we go, that's already fixed it, absolutely wonderful, but then of course we need the opposite, when battery is below, let's say, 90. Where are you, boiler, set to maximum again, sure. That's a little bit crude, there's definitely better ways of doing it than just that, but right now I need to make it so if I'm editing it in the campaign, I'm not losing all of my resources. Okay, time for our battle plan, everyone! Move there. Okay, that's a good first step. We're going to go ahead and attack this tile into the resource zone. This way, we can slow down the enemy reinforcements. Now, thankfully, in the previous video, and when I was moving down and around, I saw two separate reinforcement tiles being moved upwards, or reinforcement fleets being moved upwards into these tiles, which means I don't think they are completely saturated yet, so maybe we've been very lucky in terms of timing. I should also mention that the Abyss now can actually cut through smoke, which we saw being a massive problem in the previous video when they were attacking the Plague Guard, almost no damage getting through. So hopefully, if the Twin Guard have smoke, the Abyss should still be able to beat them. I'm really hoping the Abyss lives up to all the hype I have for it in my head. The very first group we're fighting, and they are all flyers, and a lot of them I've never seen before. Things like the Harbringer and the Omen. Okay, that's very interesting indeed. Okay, let's go ahead and put the Plague Guard over here. There should be one more hanging around somewhere. Uh, Plague Guard, where are you? There's the Abyss. Oh, that's the Plague Guard. Okay, so you can go over there. The Swarm is going to go pretty much everywhere and be right up close as soon as the battle starts. And hopefully things will go well. Now, I haven't really changed the... What's it called? I haven't changed the target prioritization of the Abyss, so I don't know if it's actually going to focus on the smaller flyers at all. There is a lot of lag again, and I feel like that might be because these things are crashing into each other. Yep, they definitely are. That's one thing From the Depths really needs to fix. The placement of their craft, and that is amazing. Just like floating guns. That's really, really cool. I imagine then you're the one holding them. Then there are these, which I don't even know what's going on. Oh, there's two there. Oh, Lord, they're all in each other. Don't do that on the battlefield, guys. It's, it's embarrassing for everyone. Yeah, as soon as I unpause this, the lag is going to be terrible. Let's make sure everyone's on combat mode. I want this to be over as soon as possible. Well, the laser's definitely hitting the target, so that's good. Continue! Two frames per second! Oh, that's so not fair, though. That's nothing to do with us. It's just, that is so glitchy. And, and the really bad thing is, they're going to kill each other. So I don't really get to see how good the Abyss is doing. It's hitting the target. I can see that much. I'm probably going to skip ahead here in the video because I'm just going to have to let this run for five or so minutes and there's nothing I can really say. It's just... Yeah, it's this, isn't it? That's... that's all it is. Uh-huh. Well... Isn't this an entertaining fight? Okay, be right back. I do apologize for the lack of battle footage, but unless this thing gets a little bit less laggy, well... Yeah, and I'm on a beast of a computer. I would hate to see this happen to someone else. Although, to be fair, we are also on maximum battle size. Oh my god, they're even healing each other. Okay, so I've had to reload the game. The game practically stopped at one point, and ten minutes into the battle, I had just had enough. It was not fun. It's not fun for the video. I don't like reloading saves, because you could always just keep on doing the same fight over and over until you win. But in this case... 
I just can't help it. That was absolutely ridiculous. So this time around, I still want to have a maximum size battle because I find them the most interesting, but if the enemy are spawning in together like that, I will lower the maximum count for the battle, but that will give me a large advantage with the Abyss. Again, something I don't want to do, but if the game's going to play up in that way, what else can I do? Okay, this looks better. That thing's on the floor, this thing is far away from the others. Yeah, that seems reasonable this time. Although it's a much smaller force, which really is a shame. The Spite, the Bertha, the Cyclops, I think there's two of those. Yes, there is. The Seraph, and the Spite. And the Shock. I remember the Shock, that's the one with the little particle cannon. Okay, let's bring in the Abyss. I said the Abyss. Where on earth is the Abyss? You're the Abyss. Okay, Abyss, you're going into the battle, of course. Let's go over there. We will have the Swarm over yonder. And then we will also bring in the Plague Guard. Ooh, saying that, we're already more... Oh, we already have one of the Plague Guards, that's why. Okay, one Plague Guard. I don't want it to be too unfair, though, in terms of force count. So, we'll have the Seekers, the Abyss, and one Plague Guard. And so it begins, this time with zero lag. Oh, that is so freaking beautiful. Okay. Let's have a look at the enemies. Okay, so we're actually seeing several from the last time. We have this one, which is the Harbringer, this time on its own, which is lovely to see. We have the, the little guy at the back. We have you. It's really hard to see when each of these is kind of holding more. And actually, now the battle started, the force count has balanced back out, because sadly the force count doesn't count these things, which is really weird, honestly. So what scares me the most? Oh yeah, and there's a giant mech I almost completely ignored. Okay, that's kind of- Oh my god, missiles! I do not think the Plague Guard is gonna have enough counter-missile stuff to counter that. I think this needs to be focused on. That could actually wreck us, but saying that, these guns are terrifying. I think this is like a minigun, like the ones I normally build, just floating. Um, you know what? Go for whoever you want to target. Let's just see how it goes. I'm currently holding a laser, which is not exactly helpful. There we go. Okay, one laser's going for the harbinger. No, both lasers are indeed going for the harbinger. Some damage has already been done, but sadly, they're all healing each other. That's really cool looking. Cram cannons have been fired, so have the missile volley. So has the missile volley, rather. Yet we are gutting the harbinger, but it's being healed so quickly! That is ridiculous! Everything heals each other here! Also, that is really cool. Hello, Seeker. You're gonna get gutted being this close to all these missiles. Two damage, that'll be one of the subs. Yep, one of the subs. I currently have it set, so it will always try to have two of the subs in the water at any given time, which hopefully are doing something. Yep, there are torpedoes coming from pretty much everywhere, which does hint that the subs are somewhere doing something. This thing has a really long reload time with its missiles, perhaps it doesn't have enough ammo to keep them stocked all the time. Our cruise missiles, though, are doing fantastically. They are kind of ridiculous on the Abyss, but look how much resource the Abyss is costing me per second. Honestly, you just can't use it in every fight, otherwise you're going to lose resources. The Seekers are doing a lot better than I expected, which is lovely again. I did massively underestimate their tankiness. Oh, don't go in the beam! Really? Now, the main body there can heal the weapons, but the weapons can't heal the main body. That's how vehicle holders work. So killing the body is definitely more important than killing the guns, even though the guns are the ones actually doing the damage. But saying that, taking out the gun doesn't mean it has to reload from scratch if it does get fully repaired, which is lovely to see. Yep, lasers are doing fantastically. The mech is coming in, though, to try and attack the Abyss. The Abyss and its natural tankiness, though, is doing fantastically. I may have also added some extra armor on the side. I couldn't help myself. There was space. I had resources. Armor happened. I think I, I think I increased its volume by a total of about 1,000 as well. Oh, no. Sadly, the crams missed. Unless they're going after something else, which they could be. Let's pretend it wanted to hit the water.
They're focusing on the Abyss and the Plague Guards, and that's just beautiful for me. Absolutely wonderful. That's exactly what I want them to do, and they're doing it, which is fantastic. Incoming cruise missile volley. Oh, he is not looking very good. He's tipping over, in fact. It seems like the base has lost its, uh, its ability to float properly. Some of the missiles are also EMP, so that could be causing it to flip. I do want to see where my little subs are, though. Let's try and find them, shall we? Oh, there they are. Look at their little evil eyes. I wonder if any have got closer, though. The amount of torpedoes in the water have been absolutely devastating to the enemy sub. Huh, even this one can make stuff. Everything can make stuff. Uh, you've been killed, but all the other Seekers look fine. Oh yeah, look at that laser. Perfect. It's actually aiming correctly. The only lasers which are missing are just because of its natural accuracy, which isn't 100%. So, so happy the lasers are working properly now. Incoming swarm of missiles from the Hydra. Probably won't do too much, they're not particularly large, but if all of them hit the same target, maybe something will happen. Okay, pause time for a second. I just saw an AI dead and I'd like to see what happened. I think it actually died though, like, got completely destroyed before the AI dead even went to zero. Um, I could try to capture the mech. It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to be firing. Yeah, my honor rules would allow me to do this. I think I may do, which means I should get on the abyss, which I think I'm already on. How on earth do you get out of this thing, though? I've not actually tried before. Uh, can you actually... No, they're windows. How are you meant to get out of the abyss? That's a good question. Maybe I'll jump over to the plague guard instead. At least I know how that one works. Since it's my little ship. Well, here's something annoying. Apparently the pearls, which are the tiny little subs, can't be turned off. Yeah, I didn't know that, and because of that, it's just killed the base. This is going to be a bit of a race to the end. And the Abyss, can you turn off at least? Yes, you can. Yeah, I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting anything because the little pearls are absolutely horrendous. Thanks, pearls. You see, normally, this is where I would jump onto one of the Seekers, but sadly the Seekers are over there fighting those things, and I don't really want to capture those, because they're going to be annoying. However, the Harbringer is looking pretty healthy. So, we could try and grab that. It's also difficult to see where things are, now that it goes grey in this mode, which is really irritating. The Abyss is closest by far. I've got to hand it to the designer of the Pearl. They are doing really, really well. The damage they can pump out is actually shockingly high. For such small little craft, and because there's so many of them in the water, as you can see, really does not make the water safe having these subs around. Problem is now I've got to try and capture this thing whilst dodging torpedoes. That's gonna go well. Abyss, do not crash. You're meant to be off anyway. Why are you even moving? Thanks, Abyss. Definitely trying to be a corn vehicle here. On the upside, the main frame is very, very exposed, so this shouldn't be too difficult for once. As long as I can jump in there correctly. Hello, you are a main frame. And... Welcome aboard, Harbringer! <laughs> Rise from the depths, my new child. The Twin Guard joins the true good guys, one vehicle at a time. And the good thing is, because the Harboring was building something, or at least healing something, but I'm hoping building something, we also get access to that design as well. Also, I love how all of the Seekers drop to the water because I turned them off, so now it looks like just balloons everywhere as they bob up and down. There's one there, there's three over there, there's one right in the back. So the Abyss, kind of brutal. 
really brutal. As, as long as it can aim at a target, yeah, like I say, the only criticism I had of, of the Abyss was its detection system. Everything else was perfect. And I've just added more power to it at the expense of a lot more money. Okay, well, are you healed enough to fly? You are still damaged, but can you fly? Yes, you certainly can. Lovely. So here's the Harbringer, now it's been healed. Let's have a quick look-see at it and see how we're going to use it in the future. So first of all, are these rotors the actual way you fly? Yes, they are. They are not for decoration. They are all fully functional, and they are all always up, right? Yep, which means that even if it tips over, these things always try to go upwards. Sometimes upside down, it's kind of weird how that works, but it is really good if you're going to have so many blades like this. It makes sure you don't hit the water unless your engine's damaged, which I think is what happened in that fight. That's why it was stuck in the water. So speaking of which, let's do this. Ta-da! What's in the center then? The engine. Okay, so this is just a giant engine, no actual weapons. That's fine. The AI is there, obviously. That's how we captured it. We have regular missiles pretty much on every way, correct? On the two sides at least. The back one doesn't have missiles, this one does. And do you have any interceptors or at least flares? I think these are going to be flares. Yep, radar and flare. So you counter pretty much every type. Huh, and these ones go flying off. Very cool indeed. So... Honestly, it looks like quite a support vehicle, or at least it could be converted into one. It doesn't seem like it actually spawns in other vehicles, though. I think I may have been mistaken with that. Perhaps it was just healing one of its friends, and I thought that was something more than it actually was. A lot of good EMP protection, though. Ooh. These weapons are actually a bit bigger than I thought they were. Are these 500 mils? They are 500 millimeters. Okay. This is a really nasty design, actually. How expensive is this? I'm going to guess 100k. Okay, you're actually more expensive than the Plague Guard. Which means I could scrap you for a Plague Guard, but I think that would be a bit weird. I would like to convert you, and I feel like you'd actually be a bit easier to convert than the Abyss. In terms of style, it, it already looks like a symbol of chaos. I may scrap it. Either way, I will be keeping this, and until I decide to scrap it or not, it probably won't go into another fight. Well, 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 what do we have here? We have the Juggernaut and the Juggernaut, and they are heading towards us to reinforce over here, apparently. Well, that honestly doesn't seem too scary, so I'm okay with that. Oh, hello. The Hive. Are you their main base? That's very cheap for a main base. The, the Steel Striders, I believe, was the cheapest so far. But that would be cheaper by a long shot. But saying that, if it's anything like the other Twin Guard vehicles, it probably has a swarm of vehicles around it, which it's just not showing. Which would make sense, considering it's called The Hive. Well, I suppose we should go after it then. I mean, oh no. That's actually quite bad. If that goes there, it'll take all of this. And to be fair, I don't think we're ever going to use these, but even so. Um, what's my fastest vehicle? That would probably be the Hydra. The Hydra and the Seekers. It's like hide and seeking. I've just realized how, it, how that sounds. I guess repair those quickly and throw them around and just see if that can defend. These are quite slow, aren't they? No, they're not. Oh, bugger. This is actually putting me in quite a bad position. I don't know how to deal with this. How do I deal with this? Um, I guess we could... Spawn in some nukes over here and send that, or we could just spawn in another Seeker set over here because they can be healed here. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Quickly spawn in some extra Seekers, maybe two sets of them, and then we can send that against that force once it reaches the airfield. That seems reasonable to me. Okay, now you've hit it. It's like only the smaller shells are actually hitting and they're quite weak. Okay, so, so the missiles take off quite a bit, though.
Does that shield actually have shields on it? Oh, that's so cool! Twin Guard, hats off for being a bloody cool faction. And off we go. That was not the button I wanted to press. There we go. Oh, it seems like we took out one of the guns, and then the gun's explosion is what did the most damage there. Oh, the Hydra's taking the brunt of the enemy attacks. Seems like they're not re when they are they are not fully reloaded from the previous battle. If I can do words though, that'd be fantastic. Blah blah. It's like fighting bees, isn't it? You know what though? I'm gonna jump onto this seeker. Apparently I did click the wrong one, but that's fine. Just need to wait for it to go back around, then I'll jump off. Or maybe that'll happen. Ooh, okay, that's completely black. I don't quite get what's going on with the this map when you're in a battle. It seems to not really understand what it wants to do. Oh, the base is healing the top. But once again though, even if it does heal the weapons, the weapons aren't reloaded. They have to go through the entire reload before they can fire. So it's not like, oh god, it's going to be that bad. Oh, do not hit the Hydra, please! Okay, one hit, two hit, and the Hydra's lost a lot of its health. Yeah, the Hydra itself seems to be taking the brunt of the enemy attacks. Thankfully, they're not close enough to each other to heal each other. They do seem to be having some trouble moving, though. I wonder how they actually do move. Because they're quite fast. Oh, uh, if they're using thrusters, they can also go on the water, then. Aha, they're using rotors. Though my honor rules do dictate I will not do any damage to them, because that would be unfair. Some people really hate me for my, for my honor rules, and I can't blame them. God, missiles are weak. <laughs> oh, ever, ever since the frag changes, they're so much weaker. Which are live, by the way. I wasn't certain in the last video, but yet yeah, they are indeed live. The Hydra's not looking great. Still glad they're focusing on those and not the far more frail Seekers. Oh no, one of them's taken some damage. I'm assuming engine, because you're still firing, so your engine must be knocked out. They are only like 2,000 resources a pop, so you can't really expect too much from them. Even though they are very fun to watch, must be said. Focus on the bases! I know you can't really decide where your weapons go, but somehow do that! Oh, look, it's over there resting. It, it's having a nap. It shoots missiles while whilst it sleeps. These are such cool vehicles. They do look very cool at night as well, apparently. Oh, hello, missiles! Oh, that one's base is looking bad. What would happen if I captured the base whilst the top is still being held? I'm guessing it would let go, but if it didn't, that would be freaking hilarious. Um, if I were an AI, where would I even be? Might as well get in position for when my honor rules allow me to kill this darn thing. Ahem. That wasn't very nice. My own forces. I'm currently taking screenshots of this. Raise your shield to the skies! Oh, hello! I was even standing outside of it, but apparently we have captured this base! 
Well, that's pretty good. Now all we need to do is capture one of the actual mechs themselves. Oh, the base is now healing the aircraft rather than the mech, which means this mech is very vulnerable now since it can't be healed. Uh, but where on earth would its AI be? Oh. Maybe right here. So landing on top of it would be the best place. I think since the base was just captured by mistake, a missile must have killed the AI. I think it's fair enough to go ahead and capture the mech. It hasn't even fired for a while, so... I doubt this thing's going to survive much longer. First of all, let's carve your head. There we go. Did the Hydra just crash into this? Yes, it did. Oh, and the other mech has fallen over. It can't get up. <laughs> this is like such a slow and painful death for these poor things. Decapitated. Well, we managed to capture it after, I've got to say, another five minutes because I kept on it accidentally killing myself. So here we are with the Juggernaut and the Juggernaut torso. I'm now healing it so we can actually see what it looks like. It did also sort of detonate, so I'm just really happy we actually managed to get the blueprint at all. Now, sadly, what else happened, because I stopped recording at that point because I was just getting bored, is that we must have gone into the Steel Strider's territory very briefly, and so it's sending a small force against us. Yeah. So that's going to happen in a second, so we're going to have to defend against those, and I guess we may as well use the Juggernaut and the Abyss. Let's see how they like their former allies now turned into foul enemies. Well, foul, lovely good guys. So here we are, fully repaired and incredibly rocky. I may swap out some of its stuff for a PID just to make it look way more presentable when on the water. But either way, it looks awesome. Again, designers, you are great, great people. I think it looks better in its normal colours, though, I've got to say. This is one of the few times I don't like my normal paint scheme. It looks evil. It looks pretty darn demonic, but no, I think it looks better in the cleaner whites and yellows. Still nice, though. One thing I will do is swap out the rotors, which I'm assuming are just using control blocks. Let's actually have a quick look-see if I'm right or wrong. Yep, control blocks. I'm going to swap out these for a PID system and then use ion thrusters or regular thrusters. That will make it a little bit less balanced in some cases, but it will stop this infernal rocking. Which I really don't like. Quite a strong engine though for something so small. Yeah, I like it. Needs some conversion work though to make it look full on Lathrixian. And of course, I don't like using designs I've stolen straight in a battle. We're going to use it versus the Steel Striders for a laugh, but I like to at least do some conversion work. More conversion work the better. Even with the Abyss, although it doesn't look very different, it's definitely acting different. And that's my work, and that's my campaign. So, let's wait until the enemies finally get here and send in the Juggernaut and the Abyss versus the Predator, the Icarus, and the something else. Which one of you is the Predator? Oh, you're actually not all that expensive. Yeah, this will be a fair fight then. Excellent. Where is the Abyss? Hello, Abyss. Oh, and the Harbringer, of course. Look at how many... How do you have so many of those sodding subs? I said keep two of them alive per blueprint spawner, not this many. Maybe there's more blueprint spawners than I originally intended. Well, we definitely have the advantage here, but it should be some fun seeing the Twin Guard versus the Steel Striders with a modified Abyss. And having the Force advantage and money advantage as well, which is pretty nice. Again, the pearls are being spawned. I have clearly set that up incorrectly. Please say you're not ramming each other. Yeah, this needs to be fixed. It really does. It's so. It's one of those few things which actually gets under my skin. Because it's not even the lag, it's not the fact that battles become less fun to watch. I'm trying my hardest to keep things somewhat fair in a game where balance is not ever going to be that good. Just by its nature, nothing wrong with the people who are balancing the game, it's just 
With so much customizability, it's never going to be perfectly balanced. There's always going to be metas, there's always going to be weapons which are ridiculously better than others. And then this happens. And then the fight won't be balanced anyway. Now, thankfully, this is, this is going to be a fun fight regardless. It's a fight in which my chance of losing is very minimal because I just want to have a bit of silly fun, two factions fighting each other. But when this happens in other fights, like earlier, it annoys me. It really, really irritates me. So, continue with my whining now over. Into the air we go! I don't actually know which one is which, but I didn't even comment how awesome this looks. I mean, it looks realistic, which is... It's going down. It's already a high dead, are you kidding me? Um, oh, there's no chance I'm getting to that, is there? Oh, maybe if we had a Seeker in this battle, perhaps, just maybe I would have been able to make it. I'm not even going to try, there's no chance. And of course, now it's in the water, it's going to be torpedoed to death. Where's the ju Juggernaut? Are you even firing? Oh well, the other one's AI dead as well. Apparently Liza's really doing its job spectacularly well. Okay, uh, pause time. Going to stop everything because that one's falling down. Looks like we can capture it and thus we have a ridiculous amount of stolen things. Now of course, as soon as it hits the water, we will have the problem because the pearls keep on turning their AI back on again. Which is really irritating. You will be mine. Uh, who's closest? We have a couple of pearls right there, so I guess just jumping to those. Oh, uh, well, never mind. It literally just got AI dead as soon as I unpaused the game. It must have just been made that before. So yeah, the laser from the abyss, kind of amazing. Oh, hello abyss. And the battle is finished, and with that, I am actually going to call the episode. So, Heartbringer. Not Heartbringer. So, Juggernaut. Why were you not firing? Were you still not loaded? That was kind of bizarre. Also, your missiles didn't fire. You definitely were on, weren't you? Well, it's hard to tell now because I've turned everything off, but that was kind of weird. Maybe it did fire its missiles, I just didn't see. Uh, that's probably what just happened. You're good. The damage the Harbinger can do is great, and the Abyss, especially now with the conversions to the lasers, is just devastating to anything without smoke. And even if you have smoke, a little bit of damage is still getting through. But clearly, I've made a mistake here. Because we now have a swarm of these little things. And as much as I do want loads of them, I don't always want this, because that's going to be so irritating. Anyway, in the next episode, I will have probably worked a lot on the Abyss, maybe a little bit on the Juggernaut, perhaps even a little bit on the Harbinger. Maybe I'll make that into a bit of an episode itself, because there's a lot of work to do and I'd like to discuss stuff. I really hope you've enjoyed the video, I've loved recording it, so if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Abyss, you have a glorious future ahead of you.